Hey there, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to this installment of 7 Minutes in the Morning. My name is Tom Rigsby, your host. Hey, uh, just a quick note here, and I'll say this as we are letting the live audience build. If you are listening to this podcast through one of the podcast channels, uh, either iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, uh, TuneIn, any of those uh, venues... You can tune in and watch me do the show live every morning on Facebook. Just go to TomRigsby.com slash Facebook. That brings you to the right page. You can you can watch and participate in the comments. We have some great exchanges going on here from time to time. So, thank you for joining me this morning. As you get here, if you would uh, drop a comment down there. Oh, and I forgot to put that up on the screen. Hey, there's that Drop a comment down there. Let me know that you're here. Say hi. Uh, and if you would, please, if there's somebody that you know could benefit from being a part of our conversation, tag them in the comment. Just do the little at sign and their name. And uh, Facebook or YouTube or Google will do their job and let them know that we're talking about them. So how about that? Good morning, Joe. And y'all are hopping on in here. Good morning, Joe, Jeremy. And Ramona, thank you all for being here already. Uh, The rest of you, as you come in live or on the replay, just go ahead and say hi. So we had a fantastic, fantastic conversation yesterday that extended well past the show in the comments. You guys are awesome. Uh, That's the only reason that those kinds of conversations go on is because you are here and you are commenting and contributing. Ramona had the quote of the day uh, yesterday, and I'm going to butcher it because I didn't write it down, but I got the gist of it, right? If you can't find the job you want, make it. Woo! That was some good stuff. So yesterday we were talking about the education that'll make you wealthy. Little different take on it today, but a very similar topic. And don't you know the other thing I realized? And I've probably told you guys this before. I've got a, um, I've got this giant database of quotes that I've built over the years, and I just have a randomizer that just gives me a new quote every day. And uh, the randomizer must be broken, or the randomizer really lo- likes Jim Rohn because this is another Jim Rohn quote. Um, that we're going to go with today. The good news is we get to hear some great inspiration and some great quotes from a, uh, a great teacher and mentor. The bad news is this takes them out of the rotation. They won't come back around for a while. But I have to trust that this is the message that we need to hear today and just go with it. So that's what we're going to go with. Here's the quote. Don't wish it were easier. Wish you were better. Don't wish it were easier. Wish you were better. I want to tell a story on my wife to help illustrate this point. I was kind of hoping she'd be back. She's gone to the gym, but she's not going to be back in time. So I'll just share it with you. I don't think she'll mind. She was... Now, before you get on me about this, she enjoyed cutting the grass. We had a small, relatively small yard... When we lived in Dallas, here we got two and a half acres. Got to have a riding lawnmower. But there we had a little push lawnmower. She enjoyed being able to go out and work in the yard and cut the grass. At that time, our oldest daughter was playing softball. We had this giant net in the backyard that I'd toss up balls and she'd hit them into the net. The thing was, though, that the net was fairly light. Even in spite of it being really big, it was really light. So the wind would blow it around and whatnot. So I, in my infinite wisdom, tied a brick to the back of it to hold the back of it down. Well, this afternoon, my beautiful bride's out cutting the grass. And, you know, as we all do while we're cutting the grass, we're thinking about other things. And and she told me this, so I only, I believe it's true. She came up, she was trying to cut around the net, couldn't got frustrated with it and reached out to grab the net and was going to throw it back behind her like this so she could cut the grass. Just as she went to to throw the net back like this, she thought to herself, why can't one thing be easy? Threw the net this way, turned around back this way, and the brick was right here in front of her face. 
So, we spent that afternoon at the dentist getting things repaired. And, uh, and as it turns out, there's a funny story on me there, too. I passed out at the dentist. But that's for a different day. The point of the story, the moral of the story, right? In, in that circumstance, she was wishing for just one thing to be easy. And if we take Jim's quote to heart, we shouldn't wish that things were easier. We should wish that we were better. Now, let me tie that into yesterday's topic, right? That the education, self-education is what makes you wealthy, right? Uh, formal education will get you a job, something along those lines. Formal education will get you a job. Self-education will make you wealthy. That was the gist of the quote from yesterday. Today, don't wish it were easier. Wish you were better. How do you get better? Education, experience, confidence. Right? And those three things go together also. You know, I was doing some research for a different project. The number one, the number one self-help topic that people search for. Any idea what it is? I was shocked. I, I mean, I thought it'd be lose weight or uh, relationships. And I guess this could play into relationships. But the number one topic that people search for uh, is gaining self-confidence. You know how you get confidence? By execution, by doing it, by experience. You know how you prepare yourself for experience? You educate yourself. We talked yesterday about the wealth of knowledge that's con that's been uh, discovered in the world, contained in books. We can read a book, watch a YouTube video, call up a coach, and find out how to do just about anything, except maybe how to go to Mars. We hadn't, hadn't quite got that figured out yet, but we've got an idea. We've educated ourselves. We've come up with a plan. Right? We're working on executing that plan. After we've done it several times, we will have some confidence that we know what we're doing. Right? It's the same with you. Cold calling is one of the things that just terrifies people. Right? If you're in sales, if you're a business owner, leader, you have to call somebody cold. Immobilizing fear for a lot of people. Right? They'd rather do anything else. So how do you do it? You pick up the phone and you call them. You find out that they don't scream at you, cuss at you, hang up on you. Most people are fairly polite. They want to get off the phone, but they're fairly polite about it. Public speaking is another great thing. Did you know more people are afraid of speaking in public than are afraid of dying? That means that statistically we'd rather die than speak in public. I don't get it. But then that's kind of my thing, right? How do you gain confidence doing that? By experience, by doing it. How do you prepare yourself to do it? You educate yourself. So anytime you catch yourself thinking, man, this is hard, I wish this wasn't so hard, educate yourself. Build yourself up. Edify yourself so that you're not as intimidated by it. You do have some confidence that you can create a predictable outcome. Because really, when we talk about being afraid of things, we talk about being afraid of speaking in public or afraid of cold calling, what we're really saying, what we're really afraid of. We're not afraid that people, if we get up on the stage, we're not afraid that people are going to take a pot shot at us, going to throw rocks or tomatoes or rotten vegetables. We're afraid of bruising our ego. Right? And when you let your ego get in the way, that's one of the easiest obstacles to overcome, but, uh, but the number one obstacle that prevents people from reaching their dreams and being successful. Ego. I don't want to risk a bruise on my ego, so I'll just choose not to do it. Right? Educate yourself, edify yourself, build some confidence in the material that you're speaking about, in the offer that you're calling about, whatever the case may be. Build your confidence. If it's speaking, talk into a mirror. It's surprising how easy that is and how well that helps build your confidence. Don't wish it were easier. Wish you were better. And I'll take it even one step further than that. Don't wish you were better. Make yourself better. Because over time, I've shared this with you before. I'm, I don't have the graphic handy, but uh, I'll, I'll share it with you in the comments. If you keep doing the same thing every day, time 
has this funny way of marching forward on us. And as time moves forward, it becomes easier. It's like riding a bike. First time it was really hard, right? 20 years, 30 years, 40 years later, 50 years later, not so hard anymore, right? So that's it. Just takes practice, takes experience, willingness to jump in the deep end of the pool. All right, let's see if we got, whoa, we got a couple of good comments going on here. We get better through practice, as says Jeremy. Absolutely, absolutely. Every day, so Ramona says, every day take that step to bettering yourself, your life and yourself. Even baby steps count, absolutely. Even baby steps count. It is a step in the right direction. You know why that is, Ramona? Because a baby step is progress. What really, where we really, and I'm going to get off topic here for just a little bit, but where we really find happiness and fulfillment is not in achieving the goal, but in making progress toward the goal. Now, now ultimately, we have to finish, we have to cross some finish lines every once in a while so we can celebrate so that that reward, that carrot, continues to motivate us to make progress. But day to day, where we find that fulfillment and think, yeah, I did a good day. Right? Was when we make progress. Think about your email. Right? I talk to people all the time. Oh, I spend, I get so much email. I spend all day in email. I'm inundated by email. And yet, what do you do? You sit there and spend all your time going through email. I probably get a thousand emails a day. I mean, that's, that's no exaggeration. Literally a thousand emails a day. And I maybe read of them. Maybe. I've got a bunch of great filters set up uh, and then all the new stuff kind of falls through that and as soon as I get a new one click, 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 made a new filter for it so that I know where it goes I know what the disposition of it is and you know here's the other really cool thing. If it's really important, they'll call me. So, so the point is, here's the point, right? Um, if you spend all day in your email and at the end of the day your inbox is full again, you don't feel like you made any progress, even if you went through a thousand emails. There's no there's no sense of, of fulfillment, there's no finish line to cross, there's no win to celebrate. Right? So don't make that your measure of success. How many people did you help? How many lives did you influence? How much value did you create for the people around you? That should be your measure of success. And if that's your measure of success, you can have 360-some unread emails in your inbox and not be all worked up about it. It's just great how that works out, right? You use the right measure, and then you can find that happiness, that fulfillment, satisfaction, and be sure that you are measuring progress, not perfection, right? When we try to get... That's why I hate this idea of inbox zero. It's never going to happen. I can get the inbox zero really quick. Select all, delete. Inbox zero. Did I accomplish anything? Nothing. Not one thing. In fact, there's a good chance I deleted something important. So getting the inbox zero did absolutely nothing for me. All right. Okay, so that's it. Remember baby steps. Hey, listen. Uh, if you're watching, thank you for being here. Be sure to leave a comment and let me know that you are here. If you are listening on one of the podcast distribution networks, join us. Watch the video. It's up. The replay is up also. You can watch us live at 7 a.m. every morning, so, uh, Central Time. Uh, or you can watch the replay if you missed the live show. It's at TomRigsby.com slash Facebook. That takes you to the right page. And you can watch this episode and all the back episodes. They're all up there. Uh, if you have a comment, even if you're coming and if you listen to it and you're coming to watch the video, leave me a comment. Just let me know that you were listening. All right? That's it for today. It's Wednesday. That means Coffee Shop Show is up at 9 o'clock. So in about an hour and 45 minutes from now, 9 a.m. Central, uh, Eric and I will be kicking off the Coffee Shop Show live from Old Town Coffee and down to uh, yeah, Five Points Huntsville. They call that downtown. I think it's a little off-center. but uh, Five Points Old Town Coffee, if you're in town, we would love it if you would come by and join us for the show. 
to sit there, talk to us, be part of the uh, the live cafe audience is what we started calling it. All right. Uh, otherwise, I'll be back again. Oh, one more thing. Uh, also, if you're in Huntsville, co-working night is tonight, seven uh, 6 p.m. Uh, at Real Estate Row on University Drive. You can look that up on Facebook. I'll try and drop a link to that in the comments as well. I'd love to see you there. And if you do uh, go by co-working night, be sure and find me. Come by and say, hey, saw you on the show this morning. All right, that's it for today. See you on the Coffee Shop Show at 9 o'clock and back here in the morning at 7 o'clock. Remember, don't wish it was easier. Make yourself better. All right, talk to you tomorrow.